I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast for the health of it. Remember to subscribe to our podcasts, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. What we're going to talk about today is a question I get, number two question we get uh, in our offices, and I've been in practice 37 years. Number one question is pain, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain. Number two is why is my gut not working? Digestive issues. And I always say everybody's got them, nobody talks about them. So we're going to talk about it today and what it is and what happens when you're diagnosed with these problems, you're going to get diagnosed with something somewhere. And uh, if, if, you, if you have these issues, and a doctor will say you might have Crohn's, colitis, celiac, irritable bowel syndrome. And patients come to us all the time and they say, okay, Dr. Joe, I have, I have this. What do I do with it? I'll say, what the doctors tell you? Well, a lot of times the only answer is medication. Well, there might be some other answers that you might want to consider adding to your protocol. Not saying don't take the medication. I'm saying let's see if we can add these things to the protocol to see if we can get it better. So I never go against another doctor's diagnosis. I always say, what can we do? I had a guy call me today right before the show, and he says, I have x-ray. He came to us a year ago, didn't want to get started, which is very rare for a patient. Didn't want to get started. Um, I told him, like I always tell him, if you don't fix it, it's going to get worse. Year enough, a year later, it's a lot worse. He came in. He says, well, I have degeneration of my discs, and I was told the only option I have is surgery. And I said, who'd you talk to? He said, a surgeon. I said, okay. And the surgeon believes that. I'm not saying the surgeon's lying to you, but they may not understand that there may be other options. So that's what we're going to talk about today. What other options do you have for your digestive system? Because we all got it. And nobody talks about it. So you might have stomach cramps. Maybe for a few weeks, you're exhausted. You're losing weight. Uh, you have to keep running to the bathroom. What's going on? Could be something called inflammatory bowel disease, IBD. But there's two of them, irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease. That's a very general term. It means something ain't right in the gut. So the two are called Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Now, they have a lot in common. Both of them have long-term inflammation in your digestive system, and they cause a lot of similar symptoms. But they can also be key differences that will affect how you treat them. And that's why sometimes you get treated one way, medically, chiropractically, nutritionally, whatever it is, and it doesn't work. Well, I tried that drug and it didn't work. Well, maybe it wasn't the right drug for you. I went to a chiropractor. I had a whatever. I tried natural stuff. It didn't work. Well, just because it didn't work doesn't mean it can't be fixed. People say, you know, I went to, I don't know, I had a massage once. I didn't like it. Okay, well, maybe it was the massage therapist. Maybe you weren't ready for the massage. Maybe your muscles were too tight. Maybe you didn't drink enough water. So don't jump ship. And the analogy I use is this. If you've ever been on a date, even like in kindergarten, and it didn't work out. So do you just give up on dating? Some people do. But you say, well, I'll give this another shot. There are other options out there, other fish in the sea, so to speak. In my world, other tofu in the field, I guess. I'm, I don't eat meat. That's uh, anyway, bad joke. So when you hear the term, term a colitis, that could be many different things. Inflammation of the colon. Itis means inflammation. Colon is colitis would be inflammation of the colon. With ulcerative colitis, you have ulcers actually forming in the colon. You actually have sores that form inside your colon. So we can do a colonoscopy and take a look at it. Now, there was just a report recently on colonoscopies and questioning their validity. Once again, I'm not a gastroenterologist, but I like to try to fix things the least invasive way. If there's ways we can fix things without drugs and surgery, all the doctors I work with, whether they work in our office or refer out to them, they all agree that's the approach we want to take. What's the least invasive way to do things? Now, there are some doctors that want to get a little more invasive to start with. I usually don't work with those doctors. I don't refer to them. They don't refer to me. And that's okay. That's fine. So symptoms of Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, very similar. Uh, belly cramps and pain, diarrhea or constipation, sometimes both. Urgent need to have a bowel movement. Uh, frequent uh, uh, a feeling like you have a bowel movement that wasn't complete, you just didn't finish up, rectal bleeding, fever, smaller appetite, weight loss, fatigue, night sweats, and with women, even problems with your period. You might skip them, your timing may be off. And the reason is everything down there kind of works together. So the way the body works is your brain sends messages down your spine, out your nerves to every cell in the body. 
So there's a nerve that tells your heart to beat and your lungs to breathe and your eyes to see, your hands to move, and your colon to digest food. So the nerves in the low back, it's called the lumbar plexus, control everything from the waist down. So you might have back pain, leg pain, hip pain, knee pain, ankle pain, foot pain, swelling, numbness, tingling. Usually that's due to a pinched nerve in the low back. But those same nerves control your colon, your sex organs, and your bladder. So with a pinched nerve in the low back, you might have gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, urinary issues, period issues, sexual issues. Anything from the waist down is coming from those low back nerves, could be coming from the low back nerves. I believe this is the missing link in healthcare. We keep trying to treat the colon, the bowels, the uterus, whatever it is, and we never check the nerve and blood supply to those organs. I shouldn't say never. We hardly ever check the nerve supply to those organs and the blood supply. So if I have a pinched nerve going to my spleen, my spleen may not work, or my kidneys, or my adrenal glands, or my prostate. So I feel that if we add one thing to medical health care, and that would be check the nervous system first, we would reduce or eliminate the need for so many other procedures. And some insurance companies now are finally getting smart. They're saying you need to get conservative treatment first before we approve other treatments. Now, I am not a fan of insurance companies dictating care. I hate it when an insurance company says, you can only do this on the patient. What if they need more? Well, prove it to us. Well, I proved it to you. Well, we're still going to deny it. But here's my documentation. I've given you subjective, objective, assessment plans. I've given you everything I possibly can to show that Garrett, let's say, needs more care. Well, we're not going to pay for it. Well, then why am I paying insurance? That's really bad faith is what it is. So I believe that if we add this component to treatment, and I, I hopefully that's becoming a thing now, that let's start conservative first. Let's just be logical, not even dictating care. Just be logical. Start out with conservative care, and then if we need to, escalate the care to other levels. That's what we're shooting for. And that's what I believe is, is necessary in healthcare, and I think that's the missing link. So when it comes, we're talking about your gut, why isn't it working? Uh, it could be a pinch nerve, and many times that solves the problem. There's also a valve it's between your small intestine and your large intestine, and it's called the ileocecal valve. And what happens is food goes from your small intestine, gets ground up, mixed up, and it looks like, uh, looks like vomit, actually. It's called chyme. And chyme then uh, goes from the small intestine, it meets the large intestine at this valve called the ileocecal valve. Ileocecal valve opens, allows the chyme to pass into the large intestine. Then the valve closes. Water is absorbed in the large intestine, and food moves on its way. If the valve is kind of stuck closed, you might have constipation. If the valve is stuck open, you might have diarrhea. So what we need to do sometimes is go in there and very gently from the outside, massage that valve, very simple process, and get that valve to relax and start going to opening and closing like it's supposed to. So we check the nerve supply to the bowels. We check the valves in the bowels to see if there's anything we can do externally. Uh, many times the cause goes even a little higher, the stomach. If the stomach is pushing up against the diaphragm, that can cause spasm of the entire length of the colon. It's one big tube. So if the stomach is up against the diaphragm, you might have, might have something called a hiatal hernia, acid reflux, heartburn, gastroesophageal reflux disease, uh, bloating. All this can be because the stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm. Many times bad breath. When we pull the stomach away from the diaphragm, the stomach starts digesting food, passes it into the small intestine. The rotten food in your colon isn't there anymore because it moves along. And now everything starts to work. So if you have patients or you have friends that have rotten potty breath, it smells like, many times that's the gut. And we need to fix the gut. Not the teeth, not, toothy, not brush, brush your teeth, yes, floss, yes. Problem's coming much deeper. The, the toxic chemicals are being released into your blood system through the colon and then out through the lungs. So many, 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 many cases that I've seen, and I've been doing this a long time, the problem is physical, not chemical, as it is with a lot of healthcare issues. It might be a pinched nerve. It might be a spasm in the colon. It might be some other issue physically that we need to go in there and fix it physically. And there's not a pill in the world that's going to fix a physical problem. We got to go in there and manually do these things. So we want to look at the cause of the problem and not just treat the symptoms. And again, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, uh, even celiac disease, very similar symptoms. So sometimes you're misdiagnosed, but either way, let's check the nervous system, let's check the valves, let's check the stomach, let's check your diet. Let's fix those, and then even if the diagnosis is wrong, 
many times, it's fixable. Isn't that cool? So you might not have all these symptoms at once, so don't think you have to have everything. That's something else people say, well, I don't have all those. That's okay. And you might have flare-ups. You might have remission. So three, some key differences. Location. And again, really not important for you if you only care about your symptoms. Uh, ulcerative colitis affects only the large intestine. Crohn's, Crohn's disease, uh, that inflames the entire digestive system from your mouth all the way down to the bottom. So that could be a difference. Again, it's good to know the true diagnosis. Symptoms are similar though. People with Crohn's disease often have healthy areas between inflamed spots. You have an irritated part and then a part of the colon is healthy and there's an inflamed spot later on. Ulcerative colitis, there are no healthy spots in between the inflamed spots. But again, ulcerative colitis is where? In the colon. Uh, 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 inflammatory bowel disease or Crohn's disease goes throughout the whole colon. Once again, pretty much semantics. It, it's important to know diagnosis, but symptom-wise, that's all you care about. Uh, Crohn's disease affects more of the GI tract, cause more problems uh, that doctors usually don't see and people have ulcerative colitis. Mouth sores, Crohn's disease. Uh, anal fissures and tears, ulcers, infections, uh, colon narrowing. Once again, that's usually part of Crohn's disease, not um, the other one. Gastroenterologists will have to be the one to give you a proper diagnosis. I am not a gastroenterologist. I am not qualified or certified to give you a diagnosis. I can just tell you what you need to do to try to get rid of it. That's my job. So what do you do? What happens when you've got bad gut and you've got the gas and the bloating and the diarrhea and the constipation and the anal fissures and the mouth sores and the bad breath? The easiest thing you can do is make some lifestyle changes. Now, here's the thing with the lifestyle changes. It's the same lifestyle changes I've been telling you to do for just about every disease known to man. This is the part that baffles me. The same lifestyle changes seem to work across the board whether it's heart disease, diabetes, cancer, ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, obesity, bad breath, uh, speed up the aging process, the lifestyle changes are pretty standard. Now, I'm not saying this is going to cure your disease, but these are the symptoms, these are the things you need to do. First of all, you got to give up the, the big seven. I call them the seven deadly sins. So my challenge to you is this. I would like for you to consider giving up the seven deadly sins for two weeks. At the end of two weeks, go back to your seven deadly sins. And let's see what happens. If I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So what? Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Now, if you're new to the show, you had the same statement that everyone has ever heard me say the seven deadly sins has said for the past 40 years. That's my whole diet. If I, if I have to give up alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, there's absolutely nothing else I can eat. Here's the thing with nutrition. It's not about exclusion as it is about inclusion. I want you to not do something. That's pretty easy, but then you want to add good things to your diet. And the cool part is, when you start venturing down this new pathway, I hope every one of you starts to venture down, you're going to discover so many different foods. And you'll look back on your old lifestyle, and you'll say, my lifestyle was so dull and boring. I ate the same 8, 10 foods all day, every day. I had coffee in the morning. I had a donut. I had a steak. I had a cheeseburger. I had uh, pasta, maybe, perhaps. Uh, maybe you liked one vegetable. Maybe it was broccoli or whatever it was. Um, you ate eggs all the time. You ate sandwiches all the time. And you ate the seven deadly sins. That was your whole diet. When you take out the seven deadly sins, I project there's about 120,000 other foods that you can enjoy. So you're going to try experimenting with different ethnic cuisines. You might try Korean. You might try uh, 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 Filipino. Uh, you might try um, uh, Italian, a lot of vegetables in, in a real Italian cooking, uh, Chinese. The hardest lifestyle, the hardest uh, cuisine to eat is American. Is, that's healthy. Almost all the other cuisines have a ton of healthy choices, even poor countries. If you look at like German foods, German foods, a lot of meat, a lot of rich foods, but they do eat a lot of vegetables as well. I'm half German. Uh, they'll eat cabbages, they'll eat sauerkraut, fermented cabbage, even better. So when you start looking at what other options are there, you will be amazed. I promise you, it's real easy. I'll go to steakhouses. I don't mind going to steakhouses with my friends. And many times, uh, attorneys, insurance companies, they want to impress me. Oh, you're Dr. Joe. We want to meet you. So it'll take me out to lunch or dinner. And Garrett comes with me a lot. And they'll take us to a steakhouse, real high-end, fancy steakhouse. And I'm looking at them going, dude, 
You don't know me too well, do you? I'd much rather have a strip mall Chinese than go to a fancy steakhouse because it's more options. And you only need one option. That's the whole thing. If you go to a restaurant and say, there's nothing to eat, I can only eat two things on a menu. How many meals are you going to eat? One. You've got 100% more food than you actually need. And so it's a lot easier when you look at uh, food differently. When you look at food for nourishment, not just something to sho- shove down your gut and make you feel full. And when you cut out those seven deadly sins, most of digestive problems start to heal. Now, maybe a physical problem, like I said, it might be a pinched nerve, might be a spasm in the ileocecal valve or the stomach. That's where you need our expertise. And sometimes you need medication. Sometimes you need surgery. But you don't only need surgery and medication all the time. You don't only need our services all the time. You don't only need dietary changes all the time. You want to know that there's options. And that's what this show is all about, is teaching you things you would have never known existed. So you got, of course, quit smoking. Uh, you want to avoid a non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen because that can cause bleeding in the gut. Now, ibuprofen reduces inflammation, I and I, inflammation, ibuprofen. Acetaminophen blocks the pain. So if you can take acetaminophen instead of ibuprofen, even better. But here's the thing. If you have a lot of inflammation, why is it that nobody talks about reducing the inflammation? I can give you ibuprofen or steroids that'll reduce the inflammation. Works great, but doesn't fix the problem. When you stop causing the inflammation, that's when the body starts to heal. What causes inflammation? Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Ta-da! Those seven foods keep coming back again for you. Reducing stress is going to be a key because digestive system is run by something called the enteric nervous system. So you have the peripheral nervous system, which it nerves outside your spine. The central nervous system is your brain and spinal cord. And then you have the enteric nervous system, which is the nervous system that controls just the digestive system. Digestive system has its own nervous system. How cool is that? So stress can irritate and throw off the enteric and the parasympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic slow you down. Sympathetic speed you up. So you got to go into parasympathetic mode to make the enteric nervous system work so that the digestive system can work. If you can't get into that parasympathetic mode, you're always stressed out. You're always in the sympathetic mode. That's a problem. So A, the easiest way to get out of that mode is to cut out all the bad foods and bring down the inflammation and that reduces stress and that reduces the sympathetic reaction. Uh, Chiropractic is great. Massage is great. Meditation, prayer, uh, even being in a positive relationship is very, very helpful to your health. So if you're in an unhealthy relationship, it's not just about the relationship that's unhealthy. It's actually about your overall health. So sometimes it's hard to get out of those, but you got to start thinking about it. What's more important? Making this person happy or hoping they won't get mad at you or your life and your your life expectancy too. Uh, Medication sometimes can bring uh, inflammation under control. Of course, we talked about that too. Celiac disease. I want to cover celiac because we talked about Crohn's and colitis, uh, ulcerative colitis. Celiac is another animal that can be affecting your colon. Celiac is an autoimmune disorder that's triggered when you eat something called gluten. Now, gluten, there's different types of gluten. There's white corn gluten, there's rice gluten. The gluten I'm talking about is found in wheat, barley, and rye. And it's made of gliadin and glutenin. And that causes an inflammatory reaction. So if you eat wheat, barley, and rye, it can cause an inflammatory reaction in your gut. Here's the thing. Most people have no idea they're gluten intolerant. Someone very, very dear to me uh, was gluten intolerant for years. And she always thought I could eat whatever I want because I'm always skinny. Well... That's because no food stayed in her. She kept going right through her. And when she finally came to the realization that she was gluten intolerant, her health returned. So it didn't matter how well she ate or how much chiropractic care she got. I mean, that was important. I shouldn't say it doesn't matter. But until she gave up the gluten, there was no way her body was ever going to get healthy. And so here's my challenge to you. Instead of going out and getting tests, because tests can be inconclusive with gluten intolerance, my challenge is this. I want you to give up gluten and dairy because dairy has a protein in it uh, that's very similar that can irritate the bowels like gluten. It's called casein. I want you to give up wheat and dairy for two weeks, just two weeks. At the end of two weeks, go back and eat wheat and dairy and see what happens. And if you felt really good during two weeks and then you feel awful, you shouldn't be eating wheat and dairy. If I'm wrong, I was wrong. So what? You gave up wheat and dairy for two weeks. Free, simple diagnosis, simple test. Do it. Almost everyone comes back and says, wow, 
I can't believe this is what good is supposed to feel like. I had no idea this was normal. So I want you to give it a shot and see. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm right, I'm right. Isn't that cool if I was right? And who cares if I'm wrong? That's a 100% bet you can't lose. I'd love to go to Vegas and win 100% of the time. You're going to win 100% on this bet. So give it a shot and see what happens. Also, gluten is a lot of fat. It makes you fat because it's a lot of sugar. Dairy products have a lot of fat in them. So there's a lot of reasons why you should be giving up wheat and dairy. But let's just see how it affects your gut that we're talking about today. So the gluten can cause an inflammatory reaction, and that causes problem. So if you have celiac, uh, if you have celiac disease, again, that's gluten intolerance, abdominal pain, anemia, because you can be bleeding internally, bloating, joint pain, constipation, diarrhea, gas, heartburn, itchy skin, headaches, mouth ulcers, nausea, uh, numbness, tingling in the feet. Again, as a chiropractor and as a pain specialist, and I'm also board certified in orthopedics and pain management and double board certified in nutrition. Patients come to us, say, Doc, I want to get well. And I'll say, okay, we're going to do a chiropractic evaluation on you. We're going to do a medical evaluation on you. And we're going to do a nutrition evaluation on you. Every now and then a patient says, Doc, I don't really care about that nutrition. I just want a good chiropractic adjustment. We can give you the best chiropractic adjustment in the world. But if you still have food issues, that may be contributing to your problem. So that's why we like to do the whole package for our patients. About one in four people that have celiac get itchy, blistery rashes. They can get it on their butt. They can get it on their elbows, their knees, their scalp, their low back. So many times it's just as simple as giving up wheat. Now, it's kind of funny because I've seen commercials. Oh, you know, you can take this pill and it'll help you digest wheat. You shouldn't eat wheat. It's telling you my body cannot handle wheat. I shouldn't have to add more chemicals to my body to counteract this other chemical issue. Just give up the wheat. Now, the other thing we started the show with this is that you want to always check the nerves that go to the organs. So whether it's Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, celiac disease, gas bloating, diarrhea, constipation, acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas bloating, you always want to check the nervous system. The nervous system controls everything. So your brain right now is sending messages down your spine, out your nerves to every part of the body. And in the low back, those nerves control the digestive system. So the the lower part of the digestive system. So if you have back pain, if you have leg pain, hip pain, numbness, sciatica, that's probably contributing to your digestive problems. It's also contributing to your sexual function because that's the nerve to the sex organs, and it's also contributing to your bladder. Weak, leaky bladder, constant urination, frequent urination, painful urination. Uh, so you might want to come see us. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, that is a warning sign. It's telling you that there's something wrong. So could it be the spine? Could it be a spasm of the colon? Could it be a nutritional issue? When you come in our office, we're going to check all that. And if we think we can help you, no guarantees or promises ever, we'll tell you that. If we can help you, we'll tell you that too. So if you'd like to make an appointment, go to our website right now, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. And we have all four offices listed, Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Covey, Atlanta area. And you can make an appointment right online. We can do phone consultations if we need to, if you're out of the area. I know the show goes all over the world. So we can do a consultation on the phone if we need to, or Skype or whatever you'd like. And we accept insurances, we accept uh, Medicare, we accept car accidents. In fact, if you've ever been in a car accident, if the car was damaged, you were damaged. You need to come see us right away. The longer you wait, it can affect how much settlement you get, if at all. Insurance companies can deny your claim saying you didn't go to the doctor right away, we're not going to pay you. So don't let that happen. So to make an appointment, drjoe.com. Supplement-wise, you, uh, I would say digestive enzymes, absolutely, whenever you eat a cooked meal. Uh, probiotics. And the minimum supplements everybody should be taking are Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They help with digestion. They help with absorption, especially if you have Crohn's, colitis, irritable bowel syndrome. Easy way to absorb nutrients without irritating your bowels. I can't imagine everyone with digestive problems isn't on at least Super Greens, Essential Source, digestive enzymes, and probiotics. All four of those are on the website, drjoe.com. We can mail them to you. You can come pick them up in our offices. Whatever makes you happy, we can get them for you. We have a bunch of other supplements too. If you have any questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com, or better yet, just make an appointment, drjoe.com. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. I'll tell your friends about the show. Catch you next time. Thanks for listening to For the Health Fit. Remember to subscribe to this podcast and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 Eastern Time on WSBRadio.com and on a WSB Radio app.